With this, it is time for me to invite uh, Mr. Vineet Karnik, uh, the head sports, esports, and entertainment group M South Asia, for a presentation and unveiling of E4M Group M ESP uh, report on Indian online and gaming landscape. Well, with this, I'd like to humbly invite on the stage and screen Mr. Vineet uh, Karnik. Thank you so much for your valuable time. We're looking forward to interacting with you and, of course, hearing from you. Over to you. Hey, Bhavna. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and welcome you all. I think uh, I was uh, listening to the first session and it was absolutely uh, fantastic to, to know these views. And I think the, uh, the discussion between Mr. Batra uh, and Mr. Weiber was also very interesting. I think that gives a fantastic pivot to, to the entire uh, effort uh, from, from E4M's uh, standpoint. And uh, I would like to congratulate you guys for, uh, for the second edition of it and would like to welcome our audience uh, and, and, and the people who are interested in the gaming ecosystem uh, for the second edition. Um, so on that note, um, uh, I would like to give a quick perspective. So we, I mean, obviously we, you all know that we are, we are about to launch uh, one of its kind first uh, E4M Group MESP's uh, report on Indian on online gaming ecosystem. So before we do that, uh, we just thought that we will give a quick context in terms of uh, uh, what is this about? So I just wanted to wanted one question. Uh, uh, do you want me to uh, upload the presentation or is someone from the team doing it? Allow me a moment, Mr. Karnik, on that. Uh, could the team yeah, kindly sure. confirm uh, the backend team? If we do have a uh, source presentation, let's just get that uploaded. Just allow me a moment, Mr. Karnik. Yeah, sure. that, could you update? So you can see the uh, you can see the uh, slide, right? It says uh, E4M Group M report on Indian online gaming landscape. You can see yeah, that, yeah, right? Can see Fantastic. Fantastic. So super. So so great. So uh, a very quick uh, quick heads up. So before we uh, get into uh, uh, the next phase of this uh, uh, conference, uh, there's some some numbers on the screen. So let me put these numbers into context. Okay. Uh, so. So, I mean, we all have been speaking about a lot of excitement around gaming, where the market would look at. So we've been looking at multiple different reports uh, from various different, uh, you know, uh, parties right from India or abroad. So uh, by and large, what we see is that people are pegging the, the entire domestic, Indian domestic online gaming market by 2023 to be uh, approximately 15,000 crores. Now that's massive. So at the beginning of this, I would want to set certain ground rules. Now 15,000 crores as a number looks very, very large and it is large. And I have no doubts that we will achieve it or no, I'm sure we will maybe surpass this number. But what is important to understand is where is this number coming from? There are three elements to this number, okay? The first element is the entire uh, real money gaming uh, uh, kind of an ecosystem. The second is about the fantasy sports uh, ecosystem. And the third is about online gaming. So for the purpose of this conference, this discussion, we are gonna be focusing only on the online gaming domestic market because at the end of it, this conference, this ecosystem, uh, we want the marketeers the, uh, uh, to, to benefit uh, from, from the conversation that we are having and, the, and evangelize the, the gaming and esports ecosystem going forward. So we just thought that it's very important in the beginning to, to call this out that we are talking only about online gaming and esports, not about uh, real money gaming and, and fantasy. Now, on the, on the right hand side top of your screen, you see a number of 400 million. Now, 400 million gamers are, are there in the country. Now, the question that comes to my mind is how many people play any sport to the tune of 400 million? So, I'm, I'm not too sure if, as Indians, we have got 400 million people playing any sport, whether it's cricket, football, hockey, kabaddi, I don't know. So, that's a very, very large number. Now, think about it, okay? Uh, I mean, I think someone in the previous session I heard talking about uh, people loving to watch uh, 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 gamers playing on streaming platform. YouTube alone talks about a 998, uh, almost about 1000 million subscribers uh, who have subscribed to gaming genre, right? Now that actually is a massive number. Now, if you look at another number on the screen, which is 1.6 million, that's that is about number of gaming content being uploaded 
on on youtube okay now interestingly if you put this into perspective for 400 million gamers in india 998 million gaming community subscribing to various different gaming content there is 1.6 million pieces of videos being uploaded on youtube till now i mean that's that's massive right these numbers are really really huge for all of us to you know take this very very seriously and evangelize this space and possibly help uh, the entire ecosystem to to make some sense of these numbers because what happens is numbers without putting into perspective may not have any meaning so the 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 uh, what what i will uh, speak about in my subsequent slides is about how are we going to be making sense of these numbers and how are how can marketeers how can brands how can advertisers use this entire um, business so just to put things in perspective again uh, gaming and esports can help brands connect with hard to reach audience we all know that 50 percent of indian indians are uh, are youth uh, i think in average age of about 25 to 28 now these are the tough nuts to crack in terms of how do you reach out to them what are they doing we are already in a very very fragmented uh, content ecosystem any which ways which with multiple television channels with multiple screens with multiple digital uh, channels advertisers need to know how to play this game right and this is where we need to possibly help the entire ecosystem to possibly see how can we evangelize this space how can we help each other to utilize this uh, uh, huge uh, new kid on the block uh, to possibly leverage uh, from a consumer lens from an audience lens lens so therefore on your screen currently are key takeouts that we have from whatever we have researched from whatever we have understood and we will we will try to give most of it in in our report by end of this uh, so the first key takeout uh, that we have uh, we have figured is gaming surged during the pandemic and it's a no brain no brainer no prizes to guess uh, pandemic only catapulted the entire gaming ecosystem. We always knew that there's a significant amount of audience um, uh, in this space, but uh, we sort of maybe maybe uh, maybe we sort of practiced it ourselves, and maybe the proof of concept came in from there. That actually links it to point two. So gaming audience are becoming older and no and and more females are getting adopted to to the entire gaming ecosystem, right? So maybe. Uh, what gaming was to a younger audience uh, pre-pandemic, the older generation also started dabbling into it, and that's when the believability came in. So today, if we think that only the youth of this country or youth across the world is looking at gaming as uh, as a platform, that's not true. We have significant amount of uh, uh, older audiences, maybe in the in the range of a uh, 35 year old or a 40 year old, and of course, many many. Uh, uh, women who are coming and wanting to possibly participate in the gaming ecosystem. The third takeaway that we have is it is easier than ever uh, to advertise uh, on these platforms, whether it could be a influencer marketing, taking game gamers as, as your influencers, or whether it is in gaming uh, integrations that you want to have, some of the innovations that you may want to do with, with gamers and games. Uh, there are very, very easily uh, possible uh, because uh, agencies like us and um, and uh, you know uh, content creators like the gamers are are absolutely well averse over the last two two and a half years to how to handle this thing, how to give value back to advertisers. So it's not a very difficult beast to crack. It's it's relatively become easier. The fourth takeaway uh, in our mind is uh, esports will eventually have a major opportunity to offer to, to advertisers and marketeers because as we uh, uh, get back to the open world uh, we will see a lot of uh, esport events being held and uh, with a lot of fan following uh, more importantly you have the asian games this year uh, uh, coming on and uh, in all, i mean we will have a, a very very strong uh, competitive uh, Indian contingent from a gaming uh, perspective who will compete at the at the Asian Games and hopefully uh, uh, will uh, get us a lot of glory. 
uh, and that possibly could be the pivot. And we've been talking about it. I think I spoke about it in the last edition of uh, Game On, uh, where we said that 2022 perhaps could be the inflection point uh, for this sector. Uh, because uh, even, if, even if we do well uh, and win a medal in Asian Games, suddenly it becomes a massive talking point. And fifth, uh, and not uh, and very important uh, a point that we would want to make is gaming is changing uh, the rules of brand loyalty. Uh, so what it necessarily means is uh, what's popular today may not be popular tomorrow. So therefore, uh, the brand loyalty from a, from a gamer's perspective is not there. So therefore, advertiser needs to look at this space very, very carefully. Uh, and it's not uh, that I've participated in this game, I've done something with this game, and therefore I've done everything. I think brand loyalty keeps changing. So a new game keeps coming maybe every month, every second month. So therefore, we need the, the, the landscape is, uh, needs to be changing. And therefore, our strategy from an advertising perspective needs to evolve uh, based on the changes in the marketplace and in the gaming ecosystem. So these uh, in our mind was, was our key takeaways. Uh, moving on, uh, we're gonna be talking about three key stakeholders in the entire uh, ecosystem who will possibly uh, help us uh, make some sense of this from a, from a, uh, from a business of, uh, gaming and esports perspective. So, so advertiser becoming a very, very important uh, 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 you know, piece in the whole thing, followed by agencies and of course, game publishers. So what necessarily this chart says is that from an advertiser's perspective, gaming can help brands to reach and engage audience uh, audiences uh, tricky to access via other media. So the audiences which are normally not on uh, obvious mediums like like television, print, and some of the digital ecosystem are these gaming uh, audiences who are absolutely queued onto that. And we have seen the passion points in multiple different forums, multiple different ways. And, and most of us would agree that um, that audience is so passionate that they're only at that. So it basically uh, helps reach out to a to an audience which is not engaged anywhere, but only to this. So that's focus that brings uh, to this business. Gamers are more uh, amiable to ads, uh, and many suppose as long as brands do not interrupt their experiences. So unlike the television media and to some extent digital media where, where the ads are served uh, to audiences as one size fit all, uh, gamers don't pretty much enjoy uh, interruption in their in their experiences. So therefore we need to be very innovative. We need to be very, very careful about how are we engaging with them. So interactivity uh, uh, is, is, a, is a word which I would want to bring on to this point. We need to be more interactive with this community rather than interrupting their experiences. So very, very carefully curate our experiences with them from a messaging standpoint is the point we're trying to make on this. Marketeers must define their brand safety tolerance before investing in gaming. Again, so I mean, being a part of the Group M ecosystem, we understand the brand space very, very well. Most global brands and most big brands in India would have a brand safety guidelines in terms of what they can do and what they can't do in terms of engaging with their audience. What typically we have seen is uh, in India, uh, uh, gamer, uh, most popular games are are games with a lot of violence. So we need to be very, very careful about uh, what are we trying to do with who, because our brand messaging needs to somewhere be in sync with the, uh, 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 with the, uh, with the, with the games uh, construct, right? Supposing I'm talking about a very, very lovable brand, very, very happy brand, uh, uh, and it being a part of a very, very violent kind of a game may not, may not suit uh, the audience and, and the brand personality there. So I, th I think a couple of watch outs there uh, uh, before, before we indulge. So that's the, that's, that's the work that advertiser needs to be doing uh, for this. Agencies like us will have to do a serious amount of work uh, uh, on this. And, and actually uh, we've got a lot of time uh, during the lockdown and the entire uh, two years period to, to do some, uh, some serious stuff here uh, because it is easier to plan and buy advertising in around the game than ever before from a programmatic standpoint. Uh, because it's, it's 
it's quite straightforward. I mean, there's a, there's a streaming of game happening. You you put the advertising uh, there. There are guidelines uh, that have been defined by the digital ecosystem. So programmatic trading model is something which, which is a simpler model. However, there is a lot of work that needs to be done in the, in the measurement space, uh, because if this business uh, has to scale up, some kind of a standard around measurement needs to come in. Uh, because if in a, in a lack of standard, uh, people will only experiment, but they will always think about, about investing uh, big dollars uh, because everybody eventually likes to look at uh, the return of investment to some extent. While we all understand it's a sunrise industry, it's an industry which we need to shape up, but without a, 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 a mechanism of, of measurement, uh, this is going to be uh, challenging. So job to be done for, for us uh, and the game publishers together. Uh, a very, very important point. Agencies can learn much from the mobile gaming apps, which have become experts in performance advertising. Now, uh, while, uh, while there is no standard mechanism for measurement, uh, the point is, can we, uh, can we lean on some of the best practices uh, in, uh, in this and see can, if we can create uh, a tool uh, which possibly can give some insights on, on measurability, accountability, which will eventually define the ROI for uh, for advertisers. From a game publisher standpoint, uh, games publishers must make it as easy as possible for advertisers to monitor and analyze their campaigns. So somewhere we we want the publisher community uh, who is possibly watching this uh, presentation to make a note of this that they need to work with agencies like us. They need to work with advertisers to possibly make it more palatable, more dependable, more accountable for them, uh, because only once we work together in tandem is when uh, uh, the trust will build and therefore experiments can happen and experiments will lead to success stories, case studies, and therefore uh, we will then embark a journey of creating a very, very serious and a robust and more importantly, a sustainable business model. This means collaborating across industry to create a standard approach to metric and measurement is very, very important. Popular game titles can provide a useful platform for content integration, helping reach and wider audience. What, what this means is, uh, again, a message to the uh, game publishers ecosystem is that uh, there are very, very popular games who have a lot of stringent policies in terms of what they can do and what they can't do. Now, experimentation needs to happen at the top. It can't happen at the bottom of the pyramid. Like, so therefore, we need help and support from the publisher ecosystem who have popular games to possibly come forward and create some interesting case studies. And we are giving a couple of them in the report, which you guys will have, uh, have access to in, in, in some time, wherein uh, interesting case studies need to be created, which will motivate a lot of brands and advertising community to eventually experiment and come on board and try to see if they can engage uh, with their consumers, with their audience uh, uh, through that platform. And, and if it works, obviously more dollars uh, will be poured in, into that business back. Moving on, uh, we are looking at uh, six ways for brands to participate in gaming ecosystem, because at the end of it, uh, we all as an industry can, can, can do many things without the brand support, without advertiser support, uh, this is not gonna be possible. So we're just trying to give six ways or six approaches in which brands can possibly use gaming esports uh, as a platform uh, uh, for them to promote their their brand stories. So first and foremost, uh, look at ad networks from an in in game oh, inventory standpoint. Okay. Uh, apologies uh, on queuing in. We just uh, you know the time uh, closures happen towards your session, so we just request you to uh, towards in the next few minutes, please uh, continue. Absolutely, we have got two more slides and then we are good to go. Yeah. Perfect. So uh, detailed ROI tracking and audience targeting uh, uh, case studies, reliable delivery to, Im uh, to impressions. It's a it's a known model. Um, absolutely, uh, uh, they're uh, uh, tried and tested uh, through the programmatic pipe. That is something which is quite obvious. A look at community streaming platforms. Uh, reliable delivery of impressions and audience tracking is is something which is available in in, in those platforms. 
uh, and and therefore that's an experiment and that's that's the uh, baby step that one can take e-sport tournaments as we walk into uh, uh, open world again uh, are going to be very very popular online offline uh, various different ways to to uh, to uh, engage uh, uh, through various different sponsorship to various different uh, uh, sponsor prizes that you can give and get closer to the community uh, team associations i mean we have seen in the live sports uh, ecosystem team associations and sponsorships is such a massive massive business today and a successful model uh, nothing stops us to to take those learnings uh, uh, in that and uh, and have uh, have our participation by sponsoring various esports teams in game integration again uh, a, 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 a very uh, a low uh, barrier to to engage so we can integrate brands and reach established audience to low barriers high immersive way because once you are there as a part of of the game uh, your brands can be seen your stories can be can be told in a very very interactive way so that's another way uh, one could one could look at and of course the gamer ecosystem which we call it as influencers uh, how you can uh, what you can do with them in terms of content how you can use them through various different social media platforms through their own uh, platforms like youtube instagram facebook is something which which we can look, look at so there are six ways uh, advertisers can can use uh, the gaming ecosystem today uh, and and i think uh, the industry is looking at a lot of support and and uh, both ways to to look at uh, how we can work together on this one so for, what are the five lessons uh, that that we have learned through the process okay five lessons will be targeted on the gaming audience be aggressive uh, we need to be very very aggressive on platforms don't look at uh, putting uh, limited resources if you are putting resources go all hog combine two or more platforms uh, consistently uh, if you want any results so we spoke about six ways to engage at least at any given point in time we would uh, we would urge advertisers to use minimum two uh, ways to look at don't use any one uh, you may not uh, get your desired results uh second lesson we learned was uh no way your fans are uh, to avoid overlap uh, understanding your audience becomes very very critical so therefore your uh, your investments become very very targeted don't shut out game titles okay don't look at preferences because as i said loyalty is very very important point it's hardly there so don't look at preferences i mean today audience could be anywhere just be open to various different game titles and don't stuck to one or two brand safety becomes very very paramount i spoke about it a couple of minutes back look at brand safety guidelines before you you choose the game push learnings don't just tone down what those learnings are we need to learn everybody is going to be evolving this space a lot of learnings going to happen i would want to believe there is no expert uh, to this business we will all learn over a period of time so learn as much you can get as many insights and use that in your uh, in your second time so that's that's something which we would uh, urge uh, last but not the least and i will just uh, uh, zoom through this uh, the slide the potential challenges for brands uh, when investing in gaming uh, we need to look that look at those very very carefully and i'll just quickly uh, take you guys through gaming audiences are highly fragmented across titles devices and platforms prioritize your segment uh, before we uh, before we decide games have a shelf life brands cannot assume that a title will remain there forever so keep your eyes and ears open monitor what's happening in this space very very carefully uh, gaming lacks cross industry standards on issues like measurement brand should agree on their approach their objectives with the uh, with the publisher before uh, committing to their investment so that the publisher the agencies and the brands can work together to look at what are the measurable objectives so that there are everybody is happy at the end of it in game violence is very common and as i said those are most popular games across the world and india is not to behind so look out for that look at your uh, look for your uh, brand guidelines in game violence is extremely common marketers should ensure game content is appropriate for their brand live streaming platforms are hard to monitor in real time marketers must replace their their approach to brand safety uh, uh, monitoring because otherwise you will do something 
it will not be appreciated by your core audience and that is something which none of us want right look at look at gaming influencers uh, from a uh, from a perspective of brand safety again because because of the violence because of the language the young guys boys and girls who are doing it uh, uh, language is a discomforting language is very very common uh, across platforms we have noticed so look for those things uh, beforehand give the proper brief uh, have an engaging conversation before you uh, you take your campaigns live so these are potential challenges to look for and on that note since we have very very limited time i am extremely happy and proud uh, to announce the launch of uh, the e4m group m esp's first india online gaming report uh, to be published here uh, all of you can uh, can download it from the game on website uh, it's live uh, as we speak i am sure you will find it very very interesting we have done our best to research across the uh, various different data points across the world and india and try to give you various different perspective and numbers which potentially can make sense for us to look at this business in terms of how can we scale this up in a more sustained way uh, for the next couple of years to go and and on that note uh, happy reading to all you guys extremely proud about this about this initiative thanks a lot e4m team who have worked relentlessly with us uh, to put this together uh, over the last couple of months i hope you enjoy reading and and thanks a lot for this opportunity and see you guys soon thank you thank you so much mr karnik for those uh, valuable insights and thank you for joining us